This guide will show you how to set up your Pink ZU board to run Pink, the Python productivity framework from Xilinx Research Labs and the Xilinx University program. You will see how to get the latest Pink image and prepare a bootable micro SD card, set up the board to boot from the card and connect the USB and power cables. You will see the boot sequence so you can tell when the board is ready for you to connect. And once the board is ready, you will see how to connect to the board using the Jupyter Notebook framework and start exploring your board. Your board comes with a micro SD card preloaded with the pink image, so you can skip this step. However, we recommend that you check for the latest version of the pink image for your board on the pink.io website and update your SD card if one is available. To write a pink image to an SD card, First, download the zipped pink image file for your board. You can't copy the image directly to an SD card. Instead, you need to use an application that can format and make a bootable SD card. There are many applications that can be used for doing this. If you're using Windows, we recommend that you use the free program Balana Etcher as shown here. First, unzip the pink image that you downloaded to get a .img image file. In Balana Etcher, select this image file, then select the target that you will write to. This is your micro SD card. Click flash to start writing to your card. We recommend that you use a high quality branded SD card and at least eight gigabytes in size, preferably larger. Faster speed SD cards will be faster to flash and may give you better performance when using your board with pink. If you are using a Mac or Linux, you can use the dd command to write the image. You can find full instructions for writing the image in the pink read the docs, and you can find a link to this documentation again on the pink.io website. We will use this simplified graphic to show you how to set up your board. Take your micro SD card loaded with the pink image and insert it into the micro SD slot on the front of the board. Insert the card as indicated. The socket is spring loaded, so push the card in until you feel it click into place. Locate the slide switch labeled with JTAG and SD. It's located to the top right of the heatsink and fan. Slide it to the right to set up the board to boot from SD card. The Pink ZU board has a USB 3.0 composite port. You will use this to connect a USB cable to your PC. When you boot the board with the Pink image, this will set up a USB Ethernet gadget on your PC, allowing you to connect to the board through the USB cable using a web browser. A standard micro USB cable is included with the board and can be plugged into the left part of this USB port. Or you can connect a 3.0 micro USB cable as shown, which is the full width of this port. USB 3.0 will be faster than 2.0, although depending on your application that is running on the board, this extra bandwidth between your board and PC may not be noticeable. A 12 volt power adapter is included with your board that can provide five amps for a maximum of 60 watts. This should be more than enough for almost all applications on this board. Make sure you check that you are using the right supply. The connector is keyed, so you should only be able to connect it in one way. The small clip on the connector should be at the top as you are inserting it. As you push the power connector into the socket, it should clip securely into place. Squeeze the clip when you're removing the connector. Details of the power supply are shown here if you want to check that you are using the correct power supply. Once the cables are connected, the SD card inserted, the boot jumper set to SD, move the power switch to the up position to power on the board. You should immediately see the 12 volt power good LED turn on along with some other status and user LEDs.
After a few seconds, you should notice an LED start to flash in a heartbeat pattern. A few more seconds after this, you may notice your computer detects a mass storage device. At this point, the USB Ethernet gadget should also be set up through the USB cable. This will appear as a new network adapter in your PC, and the USB cable will behave as a network connection to the board. For example, as if you connected an Ethernet cable between your PC and board. This network connection will be your main connection to the board when using Pink. The board also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which can be set up later. It's recommended to start with the USB gadget. After approximately 40 seconds, the done LED will turn on. This indicates that the system is up and running and a default bitstream has been downloaded to the programmable logic. A few seconds after this, the four white user LEDs will flash several times along with the RGB LEDs, which will flash blue. The white LEDs will remain on and the RGB LEDs will turn off. The board is now ready for you to connect to it. You will be connecting to a JupyterLab web server which is running on the board. On your computer, open a web browser. The latest versions of Chrome, Firefox and Safari browsers are recommended for use with Jupyter. In your web browser, enter the address 192.168.3.1 slash lab, and this is the default IP address of the board. The Jupyter password is Xilinx, all lowercase. And you are now ready to start using Pink. In the Jupyter Home area, you can browse to and open some example notebooks already included on the board. You can use these to start exploring your board and learn more about the Pink framework. For further information, go to the link as shown for the Pink ZU web pages. From here, you can find more information on getting started and other resources for your board.